Buckle up, everyone. You are strapped in and ready for the Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman, informing, educating, and entertaining Californians one policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. Hello, hello. How are you today? This is Carl Sussman. Thank you, as always, for being here and joining me. We have a jam-packed uh, show today, so I want to jump right in. But before I do, first, I'd like to welcome GeoVera Insurance Company is one of our sponsors. Thank you so much, and more on that later. We have contacts. So first, first of all, be sure you know you can reach out to me if you have any questions. Call right now at 559-656-0317. You can also email anytime at questions at insurancehour.com. If you need immediate help, you can dial on your cell phone, pound 250, use the keyword insurance, and you should get to an agent right away. If you're looking specifically for a homeowner's insurance quote, we have a system set up for that as well. You can dial again, pound 250, use the keyword, you guessed it, homeowner's insurance. That will get you into a system to help you try and get homeowner's insurance or fire insurance right away. All right, without further ado, let's jump right in. Well, a little more ado. It seems as if there is an awful lot of activity on social media regarding insurance and in California specifically these days. So I've become a little more active than I had in the past. Not necessarily something I love doing, but if that's where people are, that's where I want to educate. That's where I want to get information. So if you check us out, you'll also be able to find Insurance Hour on Twitter slash X, on Instagram, wherever else you might be finding your, uh, what do they call it, your social media news, which is not necessarily a good way of putting it. But uh, what, what was a phrase somebody used the other day? I think they called it their TikTok news source. It just made me shudder. What we are going to talk about right now is the California insurance marketplace, specifically the sustainable insurance strategy and some additional regulations that are being proposed that are in the process of being rolled out. There have been three notices that have come from the California Department of Insurance in literally just the last few days, and I'm going to try and unpack all of those for you in order as we go. If you have questions as we go, I will stop. Don't forget 559-656-0317 is the number. You will get the infamous Jesse on the phone and he will get you through to me. He'll start whispering in my ear and say, somebody has a question. And then you'll magically appear. Okay. If you're living in California, then you already know that the insurance marketplace is a hot mess. And yes, that's a formal phrase, hot mess. And that means that if you call 10 insurance companies or agents or brokers to try and get a proposal for homeowner's insurance, eight of them will probably just tell you right off the bat, I can't help you. One of the 10 might say, there's a little bit of a shortage. Let me see what I can do. Give me your information. And then they never call you back. And that one out of 10 might actually go through some of the legwork of checking, preparing options with potentially non-admitted insurance companies, more on that later, or the California Fair Plan. It is very difficult. We are far, far away from a position where we have a competitive marketplace where hundreds of insurance carriers are competing to write insurance for our homes, our condominiums, and our renter's insurance policies, which of course lowers rates. So when we don't have competition, what you're seeing not only is is an extremely difficult time trying to even get a quote, the prices that you're seeing are astronomical. They are higher than we have ever seen before. Now, some of that is to be expected because we are seeing there, there are actual financial reasons why insurance is costing more. Side note, it's pretty simple. Everything costs more right now, right? Prices of things have gone up dramatically all across the board. And remember, insurance carriers are actually paying for those things that now cost more. So we can expect things to be costing more for our insurance premiums since they're paying more for everything they're repurchasing for us in the event of a claim. But that's a side note. We talked about that in an earlier show, and we can talk about it again if you like. But what I want to focus on right now is what is the California Department of Insurance doing What is happening to try and get California back on track so that we have a robust uh, marketplace for people to be able to purchase homeowners insurance? Ricardo Lara is our current insurance commissioner, and he put forth something called the California Sustainable Insurance Strategy. The California Sustainable Insurance Strategy is an entire package filled with different regulations, different guidelines to modernize what the insurance industry does how it functions in California. Now, as is usually the case, whenever there's changes to anything, people tend to push back. Don't forget also, when there's changes, that's usually because there's a reason for changes. So that means things are not in a good place. So we're already sour. So 
consumers, myself included, are sour on the process, on the availability, on the price of obtaining property insurance in California. We're already sour on it. We're already upset about it. And when somebody steps in and says, I'm going to fix it, I'm going to give you some options, I'm going to put things together to try and reshape the marketplace, there's obviously going to be a jaundiced eye put forth because people are thinking, oh, I'm already upset, and how are they going to fix it, and what could they possibly do? I'm going to talk about some of the things that are being done, that are being proposed at this point. Finally, remember, there is the trailer bill that is being added on to Governor Newsom's budget bill, which is going to fast-track the first part of the sustainable insurance strategy that we're talking about. So let me go through the basic three, four tenets of the sustainable insurance strategy. The first part of it involves how an insurance carrier interacts with the Department of Insurance whenever it wants to make a change. A change could be a new product. It could be a change in price. It could be a change in how they underwrite something. It's just any kind of a change. Right now, that process is a little bit loosey-goosey, let's just say. It could take anywhere from several months to several years to get through the process. We won't talk about why that happens. We can save that for another day. We don't have to play the blame game. We might. No, we won't. There's actually a consensus on why it takes so long to get things through. The Department of Insurance and the insurance carriers both agree the process takes so long in part because they're not able to know what they are supposed to provide and the insurance depart- the Department of Insurance is not quite sure what it is they need until they're going through the process. So the first part of the sustainable insurance strategy is fixing that piece. The insurance carriers are going to be given what's called almost a checklist. This is the information that we need in order to review the filing. The filing is a fancy way of saying the change request you have for your insurance product. The insurance carriers will then have a roadmap of everything that they need, including the actual tools that the California Department of Insurance utilizes themselves to be able to run their models and to be able to see what it is that the Department of Insurance is going to see. They're going to have a complete application, a complete picture. The insurance carrier will know up front if what they're requesting makes financial sense. Remember, per Proposition 103, insurance premiums need to be adequate but not excessive. Adequate, but not excessive. That's the current law. And that's what the insurance industry needs to follow. We're going to talk about the other tenets of the sustainable insurance strategy. Let's take a quick break, and we're going to hear from our brand new sponsor, GeoVera Insurance Company. Check it out. Let's talk about earthquakes for a minute. Look, we know we live in earthquake country here in California. Powerful, devastating earthquakes have happened here before, and science says that they will happen again. They can't tell us exactly when. They can just tell us that it is going to happen. Count on it. Prepare for it. Did you know that earthquakes are not covered by your homeowner's insurance policy? You need a separate policy to give you the peace of mind that you will be able to recover without getting financially wiped out the next time we get hit with a big one. There is a great company here in California that will provide you with earthquake coverage you need at a price you can afford. That company is GeoVera. I have a policy through GeoVera. I really like how easy it is to choose from all of their great coverage options, backed by the financial strength that lets me know that they will be here for me when I need them the most. Go to getquake.com forward slash insurance hour to learn more. That's getquake.com slash insurance hour. Make sure you're ready for the day when the ground shakes again. Hello, hello, welcome back. And I just want to dovetail on that. I actually do have a policy with GeoVera Insurance Company. And as you can imagine, being in the business, being in the industry for a long time, I can get insurance from pretty much wherever I like. I go with GeoVera because they do have what I find to be the best rates, the best coverage, and the easiest process to go about selecting what we need. So we do have a link set up for you. You can simply go to getquake.com forward slash insurance hour. Okay. Back to the show. Remember, you can reach out anytime. If you have questions, you can call 559-656-0317 or send your questions to questions at insurancehour.com. If you have a cell phone, shocking, most of us do, you can also just dial pound 250, use the keyword insurance, and that will get you to an insurance agent right away. Since we are talking about property insurance in California, if you are looking to get homeowner's insurance, maybe your policy has been non-renewed, something's happened, You can also dial pound 250 and simply use the keyword homeowner's insurance, and that too will transfer you into a system that will try and help you get some coverage. Okay, before the break, 
We are talking about the sustainable insurance strategy, which is Ricardo Lada's the insurance commissioner's um, process to try and jumpstart and get the competition back to California, get all the carriers to write again, get them to compete again, get them to lower the rates because after all they're competing and that's what happens. We talked about the first part of that process of the sustainable insurance strategy being what I'm calling the checklist, which is the Department of Insurance is committing to saying, we will tell you insurance companies exactly what information we need in order to review your request for a change. And the insurance carriers are saying, okay, we will provide you with all of the information you asked for the first time around. Now, by doing that, they're going to guarantee that this process is going to immediately be faster because you're going to eliminate that back and forth that both the industry and the Department of Insurance claim is going on right now. That's the first thing. Now, that part of the regulation is also what is being put on the trailer bill that Governor Newsom is looking to put into effect for uh, the budget bill for the next year. In the event this happens, you're actually going to see potentially this part of the regulations roll out immediately. Now, what does that mean? It also means that once all of that information is received by the Department of Insurance, the department has 60 days to review that information. 60 days. So it has two months. After that two-month period, if the Department of Insurance still needs time, they can request another 30-day extension. If they're still working on it and not sure or they still haven't had a chance to get to that particular request, they can also request an additional 30-day period of time to review. Now we're up to 120 days. At 120 days, the Department of Insurance is committing that they will respond to that request. Now, this is important. They're claiming they will respond. They're not saying they're going to approve it. They're not saying it's guaranteed to be approved. They're not saying that it's automatically approved. None of that. So pay attention because there's a lot of noise going on out there by certain groups saying that, oh, there's this fast tracking and it's going to guarantee these high rates happen really quickly without oversight. Not true. Not true. Literally not true. So listen to the facts, not the noise. All this part of the sustainable insurance strategy is doing is taking the process that an insurance carrier goes through in communicating with the Department of Insurance for changes they want in their policy to being an infinite period of time of up and back. I need this. Here it is. No, how about that? Okay, here's that. That can take months and years to here's exactly what we need. Here's what you need. And the maximum of 120 days to respond, respond, okay, not approve respond. Okay. That's the first part of the sustainable insurance strategy. The second part has to do with modernizing different types of ways that the industry is able to come up with how they are able to stay competitive. California is unique. It's the only state in the country that does not allow certain expenses that an insurance carrier has to be included in that calculation of what's considered adequate and non-excessive, right? We talked about that earlier. That's the tenant of insurance in California. The pricing has to be adequate, but not excessive. So in doing that, part of the pricing that's done, the insurance carriers have what's called reinsurance. And reinsurance is a type of insurance that an insurance company will purchase to offset their exposure. So for example, if you're an insurance company and you're thinking, you know what, I wouldn't mind writing in that part of town, but I just don't think I have the financial backing to afford it in the event there's a large loss. What that carrier can do is go to another insurance company or a reinsurance company more specifically and say, hey, how about you split this with me? So I'll collect the premium, I'll give you half, and I'll keep half. If there's a loss, I'll pay half the loss, you pay half the loss. That's how reinsurance works. Now, there is a premium in doing that. It's not an even Steven kind of deal. The insurance carrier has to pay a premium for, in essence, sharing that risk. And in California, that premium that they're paying to do that cannot be included in part of the exposure and part of the expense that the insurance carrier has. That's the second part of the the strategic insurance strategy is to allow, really I say the carriers to do what they do in every other state, which is we want to encourage reinsurance, by the way, that's something good. That's spreading the risk even more because we don't want to necessarily just have to rely on one insurance company and their financial solvency a lot better if they split the risk up with other carriers. So this is something we want to encourage. And by encouraging that, we're going to give consumers more protection. So part of the plan, the second part is if we're looking at it as a one, two, three, four, 
is we're going to allow the insurance carriers to utilize reinsurance costs as it pertains to California. This is a big bone of contention because people are saying, well, the cost for reinsurance worldwide has been going up. Again, you don't want to get me started on the whys. Just take it at face value. The reinsurance costs worldwide have gone way, way up. California says, well, you know what? I, I get it. But we don't want you to have, we don't want to have to subsidize the fact that the insurance costs for reinsurance have gone up worldwide. But we're okay if you want to take a break from that and say, if costs for reinsurance for California only exposures have gone up, we will permit you to utilize that in your formula, not pass it on. Okay. This is not taking that premium and making consumers pay it. Again, don't listen to the noise, read the documents, listen to the facts. This is going to permit insurance carriers to utilize their expense in purchasing reinsurance in part of the calculation for their rate filing, okay? Part of their rate filing. It's not a pass-through. It's not 100%. It's just part of the mix. This does not change the excessive and adequate. It simply changes the way that you're able to put data into that, all right? You might notice I'm trying not to be snooty about it. There's a lot of misinformation going on out there, a lot. And for someone like me that actually reads the documents and speaks to consumers and is involved in this, it's frustrating. So if I start to get a little snooty, um, let me know, and I'll try and take it down a notch because I really don't want to be. I just want you to have the correct information. So let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll move along with other parts of the sustainable insurance strategy and how it's going to impact California. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just a few moments, the window to the Magic Podcast Show will begin. My name is Patrick. My name is Calvin. I'm Mouseketeer Greg. My name is Paul, and I will be your guide through the wonderful world of Disney sound experiences. This show is a weekly trip into the world of the Disney theme parks and resorts. And this is the place where you get to use your ears to surround yourself with the magic. For your safety, please remain seated while listening to the windowtothemagic.com podcast. Maybe there's a name for this. Something like Disnotic Obsession. Please visit windowtothemagic.com for more information, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts and in the iHeartMedia app. Hello, hello, Carl Sussman, Insurance Hour. Thank you again for being here as always. I do appreciate it. Remember, the phones are open, 559-656-0317. Also, you can send your questions in to questions at insurancehour.com. If you need a homeowner's insurance quote, a fire insurance quote, you've been nominated, something's happened right away, you need some help right now, also grab your cell phone, dial pound 250. You can use the phrase homeowner's insurance when it asks, and that will get you through to a system that will try and find someone that can help you out with getting the coverage that you're looking for. For the break, we were talking about the sustainable insurance strategy and how this is going to impact California. I do want to say one more time, I feel a little bit... uh, a little bit emotional about this. I get a little bit upset because when I'm reading online, I'm seeing a lot of noise, I call it. A, a lot of just straight out misinformation that's coming from certain places. So I want to just give you a couple of hints. When you're reading and you're paying attention to things that are going on in an industry, you sort of start zeroing in on factors. For example, I'll read something that's posted online that says, the sustainable insurance strategy could, and it lists a bunch of horrible things, could. Well, we could get hit by a meteor. But what they don't tell you is there's another part of that, of the legislation and the regulations that prohibit basically everything that was just stated as could happen or making the likelihood extraordinarily low, if not eliminating it. So look out for those phrases like this could happen. It might allow carriers to happen. It's allowing, um, I see a lot of the phrase like could, might be, could enable all sorts of fancy ways that get hidden because all we're looking at when we're scrolling through our news feed is, let's face it, the big news. We're looking for things that are impactful. We don't notice the little words that are in there. But in this context, it's important because the sustainable insurance strategy, let me just give you two points that you should be aware of. 
because I've seen this being literally said in the complete opposite. It's just patently false. First of all, you you might be reading or seeing that the this first part of the sustainable insurance strategy that expedites the process that an insurance carrier goes through with the Department of Insurance was going to guarantee rate increases in 120 days. Simply not true. It's actually factually wrong. There is no guarantee of any rate increases from any insurance company. The current law, Proposition 103, states that the elected insurance commissioner, that's the guy that we've elected now twice, has to approve any change to any insurance policy as it comes down the line, okay? Now, the fact that it's going from 120 days to, uh, from an infinite period of time doesn't change the fact that at that period of time, the Department of Insurance can simply say, no, and that's the end of that. So pay attention to that. There are no guarantee increases. There are no automatic increases. Doesn't exist. Another point that I saw that drove me nuts. The organization that created Proposition 103 In Proposition 103, it says that any type of a rate increase of 7% or higher can have what's called an intervening process, which basically means this particular organization 90% of the time gets involved and makes some money to try and uh, slow the process down under the umbrella of helping consumers. uh, This is another show another time. But in Proposition 103, it literally says 7% or higher. It's been like that for 30 years. All of a sudden, because it gets good clicks, the same organization is sending out posts that say the strategic insurance strategy is allowing insurance carriers to get rates increased if they're under 7% without any intervention. Well, that's the way the law was written by that organization. That's been the law for 30 years. And again, what they're not saying is that it doesn't give an automatic increase. All it means is that instead of an intervening process coming at 7% or more, again, like it's been for 30 years, it's up to the Department of Insurance solely to make the decision on if the rates filing are adequate or not, if they're excessive or not. Again, no change here. Literally, if you write a law and then 30 years later you start bashing part of it, but you pretend that it's because of something else, it's a little disingenuous. So keep that in mind when you hear the 7%, 6.9, none of that has changed. That's been the case for 30 some odd years. And also keep in mind, anytime you see the word automatic, there is no automatic. The Department of Insurance has the final say in absolutely every part of this process. Always has and probably always will. Okay. All right. Let's move forward because no, there's one more I have to tell you. I keep seeing and hearing about the black box underwriting, right? Black box underwriting. The insurance carriers are going to find a way to to make choices and they're not going to explain it and they're just going to do whatever they want to do. Okay, that's not true either. The way it works, and again, this is in the text. It's in the document. You just have to read it if you want. You'll find it. Based on the new regulations, anytime an insurance carrier wants to have a change in their underwriting, they have to present it to the Department of Insurance. That includes all of the data that they utilize to be able to come up with the rating structure they want to use. They must present that data to the Department of Insurance. Without it, the application is incomplete. Without it, they will not get any type of a change to their product or policy, period. End of story. Now, what they could be saying, and this is the frustrating part, there are parts that you could argue are not okay, But then argue that part. The part of this that I think they're trying to say is that consumers don't get to have access to that information. Only the Department of Insurance does, along with the insurance carriers, which is absolutely true. But that's sort of the way life works, right? You can't have a private company provide all of their private confidential data that they spend God knows how much money on to try and generate and give it to the public, which means giving it to their competitors. They would lose their competitive edge. It would be like saying, okay, McDonald's, if you're going to sell food, we need you to to give us the exact process for how you make your food, what's in your food, where you source your food, or even easier, just take Coca-Cola. This would be like us saying to Coca-Cola, hey, we want to know what the formula is for Coca-Cola. Has to be given out right now, period, end of story. Well, that would never happen. But the FDA knows what's in Coca-Cola, right? 
they know that there's nothing in there that's going to, well, I was going to say not poison us. That's arguable. You get my point. The people that need to know this information by regulation and by law will continue to always have access to this information. Interestingly enough, we elect an insurance commissioner in California, and that's the person that will have access to everything. There is no black box. There is no data that is not provided to the Department of Insurance. Zip, zero, zilch. If you hear otherwise, you are hearing incorrectly. And I would let anyone, I would love to talk to someone who feels otherwise because I've read the document. It's very, very clear. (sighs) I said I wasn't going to get aggravated, and here I go. All right, in that case, let's take another quick break. When we come back, we'll talk some more about the sustainable insurance strategy. I'm Carl Sussman, and this is Insurance Hour. Do you need homeowner's insurance? Has your previous insurance company left the state, non-renewed your policy, or maybe they just raised your premium to an amount that you simply can't afford? Whatever the situation, we can help. Just dial pound 250 on your cell phone and say keyword insurance quote, and we will connect you with an agent who can assist you right away. Or if you prefer, you can visit us online at insurancehour.com forward slash quotes. Whether you're looking for homeowner's insurance or auto insurance, we'll send the best options straight to you. So what are you waiting for? Simply dial pound 250 and say keyword insurance quote, and we will connect you with a live agent to help provide competitive quotes for your homeowner's insurance or auto insurance. Don't get caught unprepared. Insure what matters with an insurance company you can trust and with a premium that you can afford. Don't put off until tomorrow what you should have done yesterday. Simply dial pound 250 on your cell phone and say keyword insurance quote. Master the California insurance marketplace with Sussman Insurance Agency. Two generations of insight make us your ideal ally. Call 877-411-5200 or visit sussmaninsurance.com for information on your insurance policies now. Hello, hello. Welcome back. Carl Sussman Insurance Hour. Serenity now. Mm, I should do I should do 60 seconds of meditation to try and calm my nerves. Can't help it. Uh, misinformation bothers me. It just does. But before we get back, let me give you all the housekeeping stuff again. You're tuned into Insurance Hour. I'm Carl Sussman. Reach out anytime with your questions or comments. 559-656-0317. You can also email questions at insurancehour.com. I also want to thank once again our sponsor today of GeoVera who is one of our newest sponsors on board, offering earthquake insurance in California. To get information, you can go to getquake.com forward slash insurance hour. Okay. Before the break, (laughs) and before that break, and the one before that, I was raging against the machine. And and in part, this is because of a a frustration that I have about people giving out wrong information. All I try and do is not take sides. All I try and do is provide the actual information. And what I'm finding is that there are certain people that don't operate that way. They have an agenda, and that bothers me. So if anything that you hear me saying or you see me posting somewhere on any type of social media, and again, I've started to poke around a little bit more because it seems like that's where the conversations need to be had, you tell me. You show me where what I'm saying is wrong because if I'm wrong, man, I will be the first one to tell you, whoops, made a mistake, that's wrong, and I will correct it, and I'll make sure that I say that I made the mistake, and I make the correction so everybody knows. I don't have an ego in this. I just want to get the correct information out to people. So if anything you ever hear on any of my shows is incorrect, please, by all means, don't be shy. 559-656-0317 or questions at insurancehour.com. Tell me. Let me make it right. Okay? Let's get back to the sustainable insurance strategy. So we talked about reinsurance. We talked about why it's important. We talked about why that's something that needs to be part of the discussion. We talked about a checklist about how we're trying to expedite the process that an insurance carrier and the Department of Insurance work on together to try and get processes and guidelines and things of that nature done. Let's talk about the next part, and it's called cat modeling, which is nothing to do with taking your cat and having it do this. No, not that kind of cat modeling, but catastrophe modeling. That's what it stands for, cat modeling. And what that means is, historically, when an insurance carrier is going to be 
deciding on a price for a particular area, they will look back 10 years or so and say, well, here's what's happened in the last 10 years. So let's assume that we're going to see similar activity in the next 10 years, and they'll generate a price based on that. Well, if any of you are not aware, I will tell you that things are looking quite different in this world going forward than they did 10 years ago. And not a little bit, a lot. You could turn on the news anytime and you will not be surprised to see or hear people talking about un, no, unbelievable weather events, for example, that are happening. Just from storms to hurricanes to, I mean, you name it, it's happening. And it's using my least favorite word, unprecedented. I hate that word. It's so overused. I'm so, as they say, over it. Please don't use that word. But it's true in this case. We're seeing weather events that have never happened. They are unprecedented. So for us as an industry or any industry to be told that you need to look backwards when we can see forward is so drastically different is going to hurt consumers in a really bad way because it's not going to match up, right? It's not going to match up. You have to try and come up with accurate pricing and accurate guidelines based on what's actually going to happen not based on what you're pretty sure is not going to happen. And I don't think there's anyone out there, again, please correct me if I'm wrong, that would claim that the next 10 years of, we're just using weather events as an example, the next 10 years of weather events are going to look anything like the last 10 years have. They're just not. Whether you're a climate denier, climate change admitter, wherever you fall on the spectrum, wherever you want to place blame or not blame on why we're having different weather patterns than we used to, I don't think there's anyone left out there that will claim that weather patterns that used to happen are going to be the same as they are going forward, okay? With that in mind, it makes sense that we're going to start looking forward, not backwards when we're putting together underwriting models to try and figure out what the price should be. How much protection does this particular home need to have given its location? There's something called home hardening, which are ways that you can make your home, for example, less likely to burn. Looking forward and using these models, they're these catastrophe models or cat models as they're called, will help consumers be told, look, you're in an area now that based on the models we're looking at has a much higher risk of burning than it would have, let's just keep saying, 10 years ago. So in order to get a competitive rate, You need to change the roof type. You need to clear the brush. You need to do certain things before you just get a rate thrown at you of what the rate would have been 10 years ago, right? Based on data from 10 years ago. So when you hear about cat modeling and you'll hear, again, a lot of noise, and you'll hear people saying, oh, this is going to let them make up their own data. No, there's no making up anything. Once again, fall back. Department of Insurance has to review everything. Department of Insurance has to approve everything. All of the data that they're going to use based on large data sets, large data sets, I call them the big brains. The big brains are working on all of this information. Believe me, they want to have as accurate a forecast as possible. They want to because it behooves them. They will make more money as an insurance company if they can properly predict risk than if they can improperly predict risk. An underwriter once told me that the only thing an insurance carrier hates more than it hates what what an insurance carrier hates more than anything is not knowing, not knowing. They can underwrite, they can price anything as long as they have a pretty good sense on what is going to happen. So catastrophe modeling is a tool that's being utilized everywhere. And this is part of the sustainable insurance strategy to allow insurance carriers in California to utilize catastrophe modeling. It's probably one of the hottest contested items in the sustainable insurance strategy. And it's probably for two reasons. One, because people do intuitively realize that, oh, that's going to mean things cost more money because they even realize everything's going to cost more money. All of the weather events are worse. So by allowing carriers to utilize that technology to look forward, it's probably going to mean higher rates. Yeah. Well, that's not untrue, but that's the reality. And the other reason is because of this whole black box. We don't understand it. We can't see what these forecasts and calculations are. Well, you're going to have to see and decide at the ballot box because since the insurance commissioner gets to see it and the Department of Insurance gets to see it, you're going to have to rely on them to do the right thing, to understand those models and to make the right decisions that are going to benefit you as a consumer. 
All right. Now, there's one more part of the sustainable insurance strategy, one more significant part that I want to touch on. So let's take one more quick break. And then I want to talk about what is really going to happen and when it's going to happen. Be back in a flash. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just a few moments, the window to the magic podcast show will begin. My name is Patrick. My name is Calvin. I'm Mouseketeer Gray. My name is Paul, and I will be your guide through the wonderful world of Disney sound experiences. This show is a weekly trip into the world of the Disney theme parks and resorts. And this is the place where you get to use your ears to surround yourself with the magic. For your safety, please remain seated while listening to the Window to the Magic.com podcast. Maybe there's a name for this. Something like Disnotic Obsession. Please visit windowtothemagic.com for more information, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts and in the iHeartMedia app. Hello, hello, hello. An extra hello in there for you, just because. And I hope everyone is doing well. I, I'm Carl Sussman. You are tuned into Insurance Hour, where we are plowing through the California insurance marketplace, changes that are coming, problems that we're having. If you have questions, please call 559-656-0317 or send an email to questions at insurancehour.com. I do want to hear from you. I do want to know. Anytime I'm saying something you don't understand, tell me. Let me explain it. If you're hearing something you don't agree with, tell me. I want to understand it. And finally, if you're hearing something that you think is incorrect, by all means, tell me so I can fact check it and I can let everybody know. Because chances are, if you're thinking something, there are other people out there thinking the same thing. Okay? Now, one more part of the sustainable insurance strategy, and this is the part we've all been waiting for, right? This is the part that everyone stands from the skyscrapers and yells to the sky, when when can't we make the insurance carriers to write more business? Make them write more business. That's their job. That's their responsibility to take risks. Okay, here we go. This is also part of the sustainable insurance strategy, and this is something that was recently announced. We knew part of this already in theory, but now it was rolled out in a little bit more detail by the Department of Insurance. Okay, what the Department of Insurance is mandating is in order for insurance carriers to be able to have catastrophe modeling, for example, and potentially the reinsurance caveat to be able to roll that into the price modeling concept. In order to get all of this, they have to give something back. And that something is something big. It's called, you must write in areas that you previously did not write before. Let that sink in. The Department of Insurance is telling the insurance carriers, private companies, mind you, you must take more exposure in areas that previously you have not wanted to take the risk before. It's actually, I better say it, unprecedented. It's groundbreaking. It's a big deal. You can't tell a private company what to do, but they are. And as it turns out, I have a lot of good feelings about this from people that I've spoken with, that the insurance industry is eager enough to start writing and competing in California again, that they're going to take all of this hook, line, and sinker. They're going to, they're going to make it work somehow, okay? So let's look at a little bit of the details of what this looks like, okay? It's sort of what they're calling a hybrid approach. So an insurance carrier has to utilize a certain percentage of their market share to be able to write in these areas. So first, let's back up one step. What does it mean to write in areas you haven't written in before? The Department of Insurance has put together a list by zip code and by county of areas that are considered high risk for fire and or underserved by the insurance community in general. Uh, They're calling them distressed areas. Now, this could be an area that either is high fire or simply low competition from, from carriers for a number of reasons. And the carriers are being told they must increase how much they're writing in those areas by a factor of a percentage. So, for example, residential insurers must cover at least 85% of their statewide market share in these distressed areas. Or they're even saying if you already do, you still have to write more. So again, let that sink in. Department of Insurance telling the carriers, 
I know you don't write in these areas, you never have before, but we need to have at least 85% of your statewide market share be in these areas. And if you happen to already be at that level, we still want more. We want another 5%. It's huge. It's going to mean more competition, more carriers writing in areas that they literally have never written in before. Okay? Commercial insurance, by the way, we don't talk about that too often, but just so you know, as a side note, they're, all, they're part of this as well. They have to write and expand the amount of coverage they have in areas up to an additional 5% as well. Okay? So 85%, that's a lot. That's a lot. That means that the insurance market in general, every insurance carrier that's admitted in California is going to need to stop, look at the maps, look at the zip codes that the Department of Insurance has provided that say, look, these are underserved areas. And it's interesting, I was reading it again, nerd, insurance nerd, I know. And how do they decide what a distressed area is? Well, one of the ways they do it is to look at the average cost of insurance based on the average income in that area. Wow, talk about big data. And based on that, they're adding those areas to these lists that the insurance carriers must increase the limit, the the amount of policies that they're writing in those areas. Again, it's groundbreaking. It's groundbreaking. Imagine if, I don't know, the Department of Transportation came in and said, Toyota, we think more people need to have Corollas. So wherever, whatever zip code you happen to sell X number of Toyotas, we want you to sell X plus 10, period. You just must. And if that means lowering your price, so be it. Whatever you have to do, you must write more, you, you sell more Toyotas in that area. We'd be a little confused by that, but that's, that's what's happening right now. So as consumers, it's a huge benefit because what we're going to see is a massive influx. I almost said massive flooding, and then I thought, no, nah, it's a bad word for an insurance guy to use. We're going to see a massive influx of insurance carriers writing in areas that they had previously never written in before, ever. And they're going to do that because they need to do that to be able to re-enter the market and write in the less risky areas, right? Because you can't pick and choose. You can't say, I'm just going to write in this one little area in California, and that's the end of that. The Department of Insurance is saying, "Uh uh-uh, you can't do that. You need to write in more areas than you ever have before. And the answer to to the insurance carriers who say we can't afford to do that is for the department to say, we will work with you. We'll allow you to use forward-looking modeling. We'll allow you to reinsure some of these exposures that you feel that you can't handle because they're too high of a risk. We're going to get, get these negotiations and go through this process with you faster. You see how it all comes together? Faster underwriting processes with the Department of Insurance to review applications, reinsurance to help insurance carriers spread the risk since they will be mandated to write more insurance in higher risk areas. Not no point if they run out of money, right? So we want to encourage them to get reinsurance so they can pay those claims. And and forward-looking catastrophe modeling, meaning we're going to allow the carriers to say, okay, yeah, that's a higher risk area than we normally would. Let's use these big models, this big data that we've collected to try and forecast what the exposure actually is. And then they can utilize those other parts to be able to write there and meet that 85% threshold. See, it all goes together. It's all one package and it works. It seems like it should work. I haven't seen it in practice, obviously, yet it hasn't happened. But if you look at all the component parts and they all come together as they're described, as they're written, then it looks like it should work. All of the parts are there to be able to make it work financially for the industry and to allow it to work financially for consumers. Remember, prices are high right now. They're on, they're artificially high because there's no competition. Once you're forcing carriers to all write everywhere, prices start to go down. All right, let's tie it all up with a bow when we come back. And we'll come back in about 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 60 seconds. Are you feeling lost in the search for the right insurance? Making call after call, only to find no one willing to go that extra mile for you? At Sussman Insurance Agency, we understand that frustration, and we're here to change your experience. Where others see obstacles, we see opportunities. While many might shy away from jumping through hoops, at Sussman Insurance Agency, we are prepared to leap, looking under every rock, exploring every avenue. That's not just what we do, it's who we are. Our dedicated team doesn't just offer policies, we provide solutions. 
Solutions born from persistence, expertise, and a genuine commitment to finding you the best coverage possible. We don't just meet expectations, we surpass them. If you're tired of hearing no or it's not possible, it's time to turn to a team that believes in yes and let's make it happen. Don't settle for less. Reach out to Sussman Insurance Agency at 877-411-5200. Visit us online at sussmaninsurance.com or email sales at sussmaninsurance.com. Let's uncover the insurance solutions you deserve. Sussman Insurance Agency, going the extra mile every time. Hello, hello. Uh, This is Carl Sussman, and this is still Insurance Hour. If you're just joining us, we had a lot of information today, a ton. Make sure you go online and, and get a replay of the show. You can find it on YouTube, on any podcast aggregator, you name it. Just search Insurance Hour. You'll find us somewhere. Remember, if you have questions, you can reach out 559-656-0317 and you can send your questions to questions at insurancehour.com. I want to hear from you. I want to fact check. I want to explain. I want to be sure that everyone's on the same page. All right. Now, talked about a lot today and we we got close to some issues that are probably uh, political. I don't know. Socioeconomical. I don't know. Some difficult areas. And I want everyone to understand that my goal, I am not political in this. My goal is to impart information to you so that you can make decisions that will best impact you, right? So when you're looking online and you're getting information about things that are happening with the sustainable insurance strategy, when you're getting information about the fire insurance market, when you're hearing about the California Fair Plan, When you're hearing about all of these things that are happening in California with the insurance marketplace, remember, it's really bad right now. Believe me, hand up. It is really bad right now. I am not sugarcoating it. We need drastic changes right away. These regulations, as put forth by the insurance commissioner, appear to be what we need to get things working. Is it natural for us to look at these big changes and say, oh, just going to mean higher premiums. Oh, the insurance carriers, they always win. Of course it is. It's, it's hello, it's the man. We're going to be under the assumption that this is somehow going to screw the little guy and help the big guy. That's just human nature. I feel it all the time. And I don't say, and it's not unreasonable because let's face it, we see that happen in the world a lot. Understand a few points if you take nothing else away from today's show. First of all, We are living in a different time than we were five or 10 years ago. We just are. Things cost more money. The weather patterns are different. It is a different environment. The cost of labor has gone up. The cost of goods has gone up. The cost for vehicles has gone up. The cost for, I mean, everything has gone up. There's this thing I think they call, there's a name for it. Oh, inflation. That's a big part of it, okay? We know this is a real thing. So we know things cost more money. Somehow, when it comes to our insurance premium, we, we feel like we'd like that to be insulated from those, those dollars in those increases somehow. We want it to be insulated from the rest of the world and the fact that everything is costing more money. So if anyone is going to sit and tell you, oh, these new regulations are going to make your insurance premium what they were five or 10 years ago, no, that's not going to happen. We are not living in five or 10 years ago. We're not going to see premiums like that any more than we're going to see the price of goods and services drop to what they were five or 10 years ago. It's not going to happen. It's just not. Be realistic about it and understand what you're going to see if all things go according to plan, all of these guidelines go into place, everyone plays nice and does what they're supposed to. What we're going to see is rates at their highest point right now and going down from here to some extent. We're not going to see them go back to what they were five years ago because we're not living in five years ago. I keep saying that same thing. I want you to really get it. But what we're paying for our insurance premiums today is a result of artificial lack of competition. It is because there are so few carriers writing that there is no incentive for the carriers that are actually writing coverage to lower their premiums. There's no competition. Why should they? Once the carriers re-enter the market, we're going to see competition simply because they want to write business. Remember, insurance carriers make money by writing insurance. That's what an insurance company does, right? That's one of the things that frustrates people. They say, well, why won't they write my home? They're in the business of taking risks. That's what an insurance company does. You're right. And if they're not doing it, they're only not doing it because they're not able to do it and stay financially solvent. 
So once these guidelines are put into place and once there's competition that's going to level the playing field for carriers, then we're going to start to see premiums either drop slightly, level off. They're going to balance out somewhere, all right? Again, they're not going to drop down to where they were in the past, but they are certainly not going to stay as high as they are right now. I don't want to get into the nitty-gritty of it, more too much inside baseball for you, but I want you to be aware that there are certain, you've heard the stories. My neighbor was paying $5,000 and now he's getting quotes for $40,000. You're not going to see that anymore. The neighbor that was paying $2,500 and now is paying $5,000 or $6,000, you might see that go down to $5,000 again. Yeah, double. That's bad. That's a lot. But that's where we are right now. What you're also going to see in these regulations are insurance carriers being forced to offer discounts that they previously were not. So that person that does still have a relatively high increase or anyone that wants to for the mat for that matter can do things to their property to lower the premium, like changing the type of roof, like clearing the brush, like putting in a sprinkler system. There are lots of things. Again, the Department of Insurance is forcing us to do these things, forcing us as consumers. If you want to pay less, you got to do some stuff to make the risk less, to, to make it less of a risk for an insurance carrier. Everyone needs to work together on this. And I know it sounds ridiculous to say, but it's true. We have to find a way that we can work with the insurance industry and with the Department of Insurance as consumers to be able to get a competitive insurance marketplace where companies want to come to California, not run away like they're doing now, where they can make a fair return on their money because they are private companies, they have shareholders, they have to be able to make money, right? That's part of the deal. We need to get back to that time when insurance carriers have the ability to do all of those things. And when they do, they'll compete. And as we know, when companies compete, consumers have the advantage. And that's what we need to get back to. So I appreciate you taking the time to be here and pay attention and listen to this. I will keep everyone as up to date as possible. Remember, you can find me online. I'm a little more active on social media these days. So you can find me on X slash Twitter, on Instagram. There's some posting going on on Facebook as well, LinkedIn, you name it. It's, it's probably going to be out there. Again, my goal is to try and get this information to you. That's what I want to do. I want to get the information to you so that you have the facts and so that you're able to make more educated decisions at the ballot box. And when you're, when you're working with your insurance agent or broker, you know what it is that you can expect. Okay, Knowledge is power. Remember the old cartoons? Schoolhouse Rock, knowledge is power. It's true. Look out for people that are gloom and doom because just because it could happen doesn't mean that it will, especially when there's regulations to prevent it from happening, all right? So stay sharp, stay smart, pay attention to what you're reading, reach out to me if you have any questions. I am here for you. That is what I enjoy doing. I know it sounds crazy, is informing, educating, and entertaining people about their insurance policies. I am Carl Sussman. You've been paying attention to, hopefully, Insurance Hour, and I will look forward to meeting with you again, same time, next week. Have a great one. I do want to thank all of you for taking the time to listen today. I know insurance is not necessarily the most sexy concept. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. It is important that you understand what it is you're getting, what you should be looking for, red flags, you name it. You just need to know more than you used to. Things are more complicated than they used to be. If you have any questions, please reach out to me directly. You can email your questions to questions at insurancehour.com or call and leave a voicemail at 559 559- 656-0317. Educating and entertaining Californians one insurance policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. This show is dedicated to Shamrock Papa.